<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Save News TV. This is part two of Exposing the Devil and His Tricks. Today, we're going to talk about um, demonic portals. And we, we're going in... Um, and I'm going to, which is demonic gateways. Before I get into it, I'm going to do a little house clean keeping. I'm going to read the copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, teaching, education, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Well, hello, uh, Apostle Carmina Cox. How are you today? I'm good. Good, good, good. Well, we are. I am so excited to have you here tonight. And... Um, Last week we went in deep and boy, oh boy, did we have a lot of feedback from that. I'm telling you. Yeah, there's a lot of feedback. It was good. That was a great, great discussion. Yeah. So as you see, boys and boys is busy. Um, before we really get into it, I want you to please pray. Um, pray for the broadcast. Pray for those that's already in the broadcast and those that's coming uh, later and those that rewatch the broadcast, uh, because as we know, we're dealing with uh, demonic forces and satanic uh, information. And um, and uh, hi, Shay. Hi, Shay. Thank you for joining. And uh, we're dealing with demonic forces and satanic things, and we're going in. So if you could please pray for um, us before we really dive into this. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Tonight. Father God, we just want to thank you tonight. Father, we just want to reverence you for who you are. Father, we thank you for your awesome, for that you are an awesome one, God. We know that you are the one true God. We know that you are the beginning and the end, Father, and the first and the last God. So we ask that from the beginning of this um, broadcast tonight, God, and to the end, Father, we thank you for your divine protection, Father. We thank you, Father, that you will watch over those that are listening in the broadcast, Father, those that are coming in the broadcast, and those that will watch the replay on tonight, Father. We thank you, God, that uh, no harm shall come near us on tonight, Father, that we will not experience any retaliation as a result of this discussion as a result of this teaching. And Father, we thank you now that your your um, majestic power and your majestic demonstration of salvation um, uh, be manifested through Save News TV on tonight, Father, as we open up this session, Father, discussing demonic portals, Father. And we thank you tonight um, for the leader, God, of this, of this media platform, Father, A.Z. Hubbard, Father. And we thank you right now that you will divinely protect her also. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen. 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 Well, thank you so much. I'm going to say hey to the replay crew because we know you all come through strong. Um, a lot of people are on Wednesday nights are in Bible study. And um, uh, hi, Shay. We really appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, 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 yes. And yes, and amen and amen. Amen and amen. So, uh, Apostle um, Carmina, um, tonight we're discussing the demonic gateways, and um, we're going to pull up this article that um, we're going to pull up this article from. Let me close this out right here. And if not, if it doesn't want to come up, I don't want it to share the entire screen. Uh, I'm in a new browser. And so 
it's not allowing it up. So anyway, this article is from Charisma News Magazine. And um, if ever, everybody got a pen and a piece of paper, I'll drop the information in um, from where we're getting this article from. And the, it talks about the eight, exposing the eight gateways of demonic. Um, so the first one is idolatry. So we're going to start off with idolatry. Um, I'm, can I verbatim that part, that portion about it? Yes, I, you could. Do you have it up? I do. I have it on another device so I can read it verbatim. Bye. Okay, I can read it, but go ahead. Go ahead and read it. Okay. Um, the reason, um, uh, AZ, that I thought about idolatry, well, I'm going to tell you how it came for me today when we were discussing earlier briefly. Um, I was trying to pick the major theme out of what what causes people to even um as we were talking about the concert what even causes people to go into these raids or these these um rush these crowd rushes with with these artists and the one word that kept coming to me was idolatry um and so then i searched the scripture um and the scripture came through with uh, Galatians 5 when it talks about the works of the flesh. And one of the works of the flesh is idolatry. Um, so that's and so that's when I started looking it up on the internet and see if, if I could like substantiate what I was hearing. Because when you talk about the portals and we're trying to figure out how is it that you even got to this place? How is it that you even arrived in a concert to the point where there was no way out? You entered into a gate, but there was no way out and then people end up dying. And for you to be that overtaken by a thing, there has to be some type of idol worship. In my opinion, exactly. there has to be some type of idol worship because I'm not going in for anything like that other than God. And you know what I'm saying? Like, my, my affection and my adoration to that level is to God, you know. So idolatry, even if we wanted to um, categorize, you know, people that are saved, whereas we have believers that are carnal. You know, we have we have uh, believers that that are carnal. We just might as well own up to it because if, a lot of people are professing salvation. However, there you can notice. Um, you can notice the difference between people's lifestyles. So then you're like, well, why? I don't think I would see AZ at a at Astro Dome doing that. No, nope. but I might see, you know, sister so and so from church down the street at that place. Now, am I sitting in judgment? No, but I'm sitting as a observer and I'm inspecting. Like, okay, what is she doing? How did she get there? And so I think uh, one of the portals, like in this article, um, is idolatry. It has to be idolatry for anybody to get put themselves in a situation um, where they would be in harm's way. I don't know if you agree it's with that, but to put yourself in that situation and then you didn't, some of the people did not make it back home. Right. They didn't make it back home. And yeah, like 10. And there was no way out. No way out. And they were they were stuck. And one of the the um article states, and I put it in the chat, idolatry is the the sin of idolatry covers a lot more than worshiping little statues. Rebellion and insubordination equals idolatry. In the Western world, our idols are more likely to consist of us bowing down to gold or silver, in parentheses, greed or mammon, or just about anything else we consult first before God regarding our lives. Once we recognize our idolatry, we flat out turn from our idols and completely as if we had re-incinerated them um as we had incinerated them mm -hmm. but it, it, you know you talk about idolatry and bowing down to gold and silver and 
um, one reason why I believe this is my personal belief that um, he continued to go on was for mammon greed. It was for greed because his gold and silver would have been stopped had he stopped that concert. But now we see, uh, as the word says, sin leads you to death. And the, the cost of sin is death. And now his financials, he he will be broke. He, you know, he has just um, requested the courts to, to um, relieve him from all of the lawsuits because he's not responsible. But as we know, um, they're not going to release him from those. I, I really don't believe no judge is going to release him from those uh, lawsuits, but it is a good strategic move. Uh, however, I don't think it's going to be successful. But and as far as the people, as you were stating, that was there, um, the idolatry of Travis Scott and the other um, concert um, performers, you know, they just worship them. And that's one thing I was listening to a, a, um, a friend of mine from Africa that has a um, YouTube channel. She's from Nigeria. Africa. And uh, she stated it. One thing she didn't understand about Americans was the fact that Americans have a high tendency to worship people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, she was using it in another context, but we do. We, you know, this person is a role model. This person is this. This person is that. Mm -hmm. When the word of God clearly tells us that we are all equal under his eyes. We mm -hmm. are all, you know, God is not a respecter of persons. Um, do you think that, I don't know why, why people tend to um, put their eye on man here so much, but I think there ne there needs to be a balance. Yes, we know we worship God, and even though God um have gave given gifts to the church, um there always has to be some type of balance put in there that I am just a vessel being used. And for even for this artist to have no regard to life, it's just it's just crazy to me that he would not stop the concert. Like right. he, he was definitely worshiping his himself i would say more than even having concern for the people um but um how much i mean at the end of the day how much money is that worth well one worth. thing also as we discussed last week we 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 discussed the fact that he was not under <laughs> we do not believe that let, let's let's clear it up now we do not believe that he was under uh, normal normal life like most of us that he was under the demonic control and so irrespective and it was a human blood sacrifice that is what our beliefs are <laughs> right right and and so of course he was going to continue of course he was going to continue what i'm going to do um is i'm going to drop these in the go ahead and drop these um in the chat the note all of them in the chat so we can as we get to them even if we don't finish today um people will be able to know uh be able to follow us through these um eight points and the next one and, it, and we're going to go back to idolatry the next one is the temples of the pagan the murder and the shedding of innocent blood is next. Well, let me put the first three and let's try to, to, to encapsulate on the first three. So let's go back to the idolatry uh, apostle. Okay. Um, and again, it is true. The, the scriptures are clear as to where our affection should go. In, in anything that we do in life, we should, as believers, have a balance. And we need to understand that God should always, it should never be a point. And like it says at the end of, end of that paragraph, uh, once we recognize it, we need to turn from it 
And it says, as if we have incinerated it, as if we have burned it up. You know, exactly. It, it should be burned up. And um, as if am I saying it, it's going to happen overnight, but I'm saying we should always do self introspection so that we can recognize these areas in our life because I'm not, we can't even go, okay, yeah, so Travis Scott, but there are other things that we idolize also in life that can carry us to a place of death, a spiritual death, you know, um, our jobs, our relationships, our children, our, you know, our bank accounts, our cars, um, our pastors, you know, and, 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 and because I've been in church a long time or been in the assembly a long time, I've seen people worship praise teams. Um, yes. I've seen it. They go to church just for the praise team. And I'm like, are you guys serious? You know? Um, and so it, it just should be noted here that we as believers, uh, we as people that are speaking for, um, you know, the, you know, speaking as in getting the word out for the Great Commission, we need to make sure everybody eyes are on Jesus. Everybody eyes on Jesus. And 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 for the youth or young people or people who are out here entertaining the Travis Scotts of the industry, well, always guard your heart. I mean, if you're a young believer, um, make sure that you're in a ministry that is discipling you. Um, make sure that you understand um, the gifts of the spirit so you will be able to use the gifts when they are needed the gifts of the spirit do not just work at church discernment just doesn't work at church when we're trying to discern each other no that is false discernment my discernment is on 24 7 uh, whether i'm in the house with my children like when when all of them were teenagers and i had to be discerning because those jokers were trying stuff you know I had to be like, who, who jumped out the window? You know, God be like, somebody just jumped out the window. But your discernment has to work all the time. So, so again, we need people need to be taught. People need to understand that uh, we should not be worshiping um, anything, especially of this world. There are scriptures to support that. And um, uh, we need to burn them up. We need to turn from it. Once we realize it, we need to be like, you know what? I can't, I can't be out here like this. You know, I might end up in a place where I don't need to be spiritually or better yet. In this case, I might end up dead, but I think people don't equate the, the severity of it. They don't, they, they think that, or maybe they read the Bible as if it's a um, fairy tale or something, but the, the, the word of God is life. So it, it's not going to return to God void. So if he said it, and I am in my own life. I don't know about you, Az. I I know that sin equals death. It might not be physical, but I know that some things that I've done in sin did not work out for me, and they did not. It, it did not bring life. Put it like that. It didn't bring life. So um, I I just want people to understand that idolatry can look like it's not like it looked in the Old Testament where they put up statues like they said in the verse on a hill and went up to worship now we are living this thing and we need to uh we need to scan the atmosphere to see what is going on so that we can detect it exactly exactly and um also like you stated there's so many things that that idolatry is and so many things that we can worship that we really need to self-examine our lives and who we are um, and what we are idolizing. If it, let's say, let's say like this, if it, if there's something in your life that keeps you from God, check it. If, if it, it, it could be anything, it could be, a, um, it, you know, enjoying food. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you spend you know, if you think about and spend more time, um, what am I, you know, where am I going to dinner? You know, it could be clothes. It could be anything. Those are things that you need to check because and ask the Lord, uh, am I idolizing this? Is this something that is taking me away from you? You know, if, if while you're spending time with God, are you thinking on the, or something else? Mm -hmm. I know when we first 
you know, when you first start praying and you go in the spirit, you know, your mind be wondering. I'm not talking about that, you know, those first few minutes because your mind does wonder. But, you know, as you get ready to go into the spiritual realm in the, in, in the Holy of Holies. But if you're busy when you're, you know, you can't get there or when you get there, you fall back into thinking about a certain thing. You need to check that. Mm-hmm. That is something that you are possibly idolizing mm-hmm. and um need to check it so the next thing was the temples of pagan religions <laughs> and these include non-christian houses of worship in our cities mosques shrines and other gathering places for devotees of re- various religions included masonic lodges which serve as an open invitation to demonic forces We must walk in love towards all people, regardless of their religious convictions, but we must also walk watchfully without blinders. Mm -hmm. It is a fact. Pagan houses of worship give entrance to evil powers, and you may have to deal with the consequences as you engage in intercession. Now, this this right here, Mm -hmm. uh, we know that this is a, a a sore spot especially for those he, they mentioned masonic but let's right. talk about the sororities and the fraternities and um oh yeah All those are demonic mm-hmm. and those are uh high places of worship mm-hmm. and you know some people say no not my fraternity not my sorority oh but it is because even though you might be on the lower level you might not be at a spot in a place that um they let you in on certain things but there's certain things done in the higher echelon up up at the top where they're not sharing with you what's going down on at the bottom and am i I right for sure for sure I agree with that. Um, we definitely need, um, because of this, this article is really clear because it's not, it is designating, telling you what kind of house it could be. It can be any of these houses. It could exactly. be a Masonic Lodge. It could be your frat house, your sorority house. It could be um, any type of club or organization that does not give um, all the information at, like everyone is not privy to the information, right? Is exactly. that it's some secrecy going on? Or yes, that, that, you, that look, they got a look when you when when someone says, "I got a secret language," we yeah. got a secret code, we got this or what? Uh, right, right. Your antennas, as children of God, your antennas should be wrote, should be sticking straight up. Correct. Secret. Why is it secret? Why can't anybody else know? The only thing, um. You know, we have a holy language and even we don't understand unless the Lord, the Holy Spirit interprets for us. That is different. But when you got a group of people that you have a secret um, language, you have a secret sign um, that only you all know, then that is something to for you to just throw your hands up and say, okay, the uh, what did it call? Not the Esther's, the Eastern stars, the. Um, Masonic lodges and all of this, and I know. Look, look. I'm sure there'll be some thumbs down and some hating on this, but yes. baby, yes, baby, it's truth anyway. <laughs> it's truth anyway. Um, and I and I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe it. Um, even when I was a young, a young Christian, I was sharing with someone the other day when I was a young babe in Christ. Um, because I was taught in a home. My father was a Bible uh, uh, house raised Bible scholar. He studied in the home. God showed him things in the home. Yes, he attended church, but he was an avid Bible studier. And he would, we would talk about these subjects when I was young, like in my 20s. And when I went in the military, I had to come against that. Like, I didn't know that that would be one of the first things that would approach me. But those type of organizations, those secret societies, they come for the young. They come for they come for the unlearned. They come yes. for the undiscerning. And that you know what, AZ? They come for the hurt. Yeah. The hurt. And 
exactly and the weak because they're looking for people that need a sense of belonging right do you know what i'm saying exactly. they, they 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 prey on people that want to be a part they're missing something in their personal lives um and so you know come to us we love you yeah. where you can be included with us you know yeah. when yeah when God is our all in all, and that's who we need to look for fulfillment for. But even, you know, you look at gangs, um, that's why so many young kids, you know, joining, join gangs was because they miss some things um, in, in their lives. Now, Shay got a comment that is right on point. Look, what did she say? People will break their necks for these houses, but not for God. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And, you know, they will, you know, they won't tithe. <laughs> they won't tithe. They won't give to the house of God. But as soon as, and, and you know, of course, they, they rag in the house of God. But as soon as there's a pageant <laughs> or oh, yeah. something, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I was going to do that some one of those the little signs, but the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, no, don't do it. <laughs> But if there if there is something um, going on in their organization that, you know, if there's a fundraiser, you know, their church can be um, struggling to pay the light bill, but they're not willing to give. But when they say, oh, we, we're going to have a raffle, mm -hmm. even people that don't sell can come to your house. Right. They will call you up with my phone. Here's phone. They'll call right. you up on the phone. Girl, I got some tickets to sell. We Absolutely. doing a fundraiser. You know, we help the community. We do this. We do that. Girl, stop. You know. But AZ, but AZ, now I'm I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the half the backside role right quick because I think well I don't think I know that these organizations get more breath and life because the church is not doing what they're supposed to do at large Woo! apostolically Woo! because if we were doing service in the community like we should be and that we were being more um kingdom minded instead of you know church centered then we would be the ones that are doing this in the name of jesus right but because we you know we have not you might you know we know there are some great apostles where we're from However, those great apostles have had great persecution. And then so they were not able to penetrate as much as they should have. But most uh, great apostles that I know that I've seen in my lifetime, they knew that the job was to get to the community. The church needs to affect the community. Thank God for a sister so-and-so that sit next beside you on the second row in the third seat. But we need that person in the community. We need to get to the people in the community. And that is the job of the church. That is yeah. that is the job. And so when we, I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of these things are like pseudo replacements for what the apostolic is here to do anyway. No, you're absolutely correct. And one thing I have to say um, is, and I'm not glorifying anybody. I'm just using these this particular group of people as an example as to what the children of God should be doing, the the, the church. And that are the those are Muslims. Baby. We talk about it all the Baby. time. Baby. You're right. They on point. Baby. Mm -hmm. They pray three times a day. Yeah, I don't care what you do, they're doing. They're going to stop and they're going to pray. Mm -hmm. They're going to, uh, their men are going to be the men. Right. They're going to take care of their house. They're going to take care of their community. They're going to take care of what needs to be taken care of. For they're sure. not going to back down <laughs> when things get, you know, a little rough. You know, uh, or certain things are being said. Um, they're not going to back down because it's uncomfortable. They're not trying to be politically correct. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
and we have Yeshua, the great I am. He who says I am who I am. I am the I am. We have God who is the I am. And yet we as Christians and children of God do not use the power and the authority do not that God gives us. Yes, Jay. Yes, 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 yes. Look at the other religions. The Jehovah Witness, you're right. The Jehovah Witness. Girl, look. Yeah, they're, they, they're they go door to door. They, she is so right. Uh, I had this one woman, which I already, you know, I'm breaking down. Every time she would come to the door, ding dong, every week, faithfully, on a Saturday, mm -hmm. she was there. Ding dong, every week. And I would bring the word out and, and, and break it down. But honey, she was not wavering. But she was faithful to come to that door. Right. Ding dong every week. And we, you know, in some, some houses of God, some churches are in communities that really need outreach. But they cannot, for some reason, get out of that, those four walls come to go on. reach people just in their neighborhood that's down the street they cannot come out Don't right and it could be somebody next door i was in this church i was i went to this church um and the pastor told this story and i'm going to use this story as an example he said that there was this this old, older couple <clears throat> that lived across the street from the church and the uh, every sunday morning they would come to church, you know, they would come in, they would see the couple sitting on the front porch and they would, you know, you know, throw up the hand wave, go on into church every day, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. Then one Sunday, uh, they rode by and only the husband was on the front porch and um, they threw up Then you know, people start one after several weeks, you know, only the husband at the front porch. And so the man left a note at the church door saying that his wife had died and that every week they sat on the front porch hoping that someone in that church would stop. You know, they would they would hear the music and be so intrigued by the um the praise, the worship. They would hear the sermons. Every week they sat on that porch praying, hoping that somebody would go over there to mm -hmm. invite them to come. Now this lady done gone on to be with glory. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know where she went, but this was a true story. So we wow. have to ask ourselves, what are we doing? to bring people into the kingdom of God, the highways and the byways. And you hear of people saying, you know, I lost this loved one and, um, you know, um, please pray, pray for, you know, but they don't know whether or not they're the saved or not. Huh? Wait a minute. Huh? Say that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. I, I can't hear you. You don't know if they're saved. You did not give them the opportunity. You did not plant the seed for them to receive Christ. Help us, God. And even in some situations, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I'm saying we have a responsibility. Time is drawing nigh, and and you know you don't want to have any of your loved ones be lost. Don't wait for somebody else to witness to them. Even if you just plant the seeds, if they say no, you've planted that seed. That's right. That's right. You know, That's you've right. you've planted that seed. And, you know, whether it's somebody on your job, whether it's someone um, um, next to you or whatever. It's like when someone asks me, I could be someone, somebody to say, will you um, put me on your prayer list and please pray for me? Most of the time, unless the Lord tell me not to, um, I drop that prayer right there. Because, see, hey, Absolutely. when I'm gone, boo, unless I write it down, you know, I might forget that. <laughs> right. I might, I, I might forget that uh uh your name or something. Right. But you know, so drop that prayer in. But most importantly is the salvation. See the it, boys and boys are busy. They you know the enemy is I mad that we bring in this message and we understand that. So we're not even saying we're not giving them in no play. We already prayed. But um we need to uh especially with what we're talking about and, and and i believe that the lord has took us off topic so we can have this part of the topic we're going to get back on topic but 
salvation, asking people to, to receive Christ is most important now because it is at, at, at the end of the, you know, it's at the end. That's why we're doing the series on exposing the devil because the devil know his time is running short. He wish he desired, the word says he desires, you know, most people to go to hell. He wants, he wants a whole crew of, of, of people in hell with him. Mm-hmm. No, certainly. And, and it's our job to witness to those. I don't care whether, you know, they can look at you funny or whatever, you know, and you don't have to go into a whole thing because the thing of you have to remember is it's not you that's going to bring them into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit has to prick their heart. Your, your job is to plant the seed. Is to witness, mm -hmm. and if when if it's time when you you open that up, and if it's their time to receive the Lord, then they receive the Lord. Right. You know, if it's if if it's not, or if they reject Him, it's on them. You've planted that seed. You don't have to beat them down every time you see them or whatever, mm -hmm. unless you're functioned by the Holy Ghost. You've planted that seed, right? Right. And the thing about it is. Um, the whole statement would to be would be to say, be a witness. When you are being a witness, you are actually living this thing. This yes, is you can live is, and, and, and yeah. you can live by example. But one thing about it, now I'm, I'm going to, to to say this in love. You can be a witness and you can live. I mean, you can live and people can see that you serve the Lord all day long. And that's wonderful. That's what he says. But that is not going to put them into the kingdom of God. Right. It's not. Right. They have got to accept Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. They do. They do. They have to accept God. They really yeah. do. And it's, it's, it's up to us to, to get to extend the invitation. And for whatever reason, whether they do or whether they don't, you've extended that invitation. Right. Do right. not let anybody, loved one or someone you know, they say, well, I don't know whether they knew the Lord or not. Why don't you know? I mean, it, you you might not know, but you you know you've planted a seed in their life. Yeah, that's that's the part I was going to say. Like, we, we don't know who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved, but I don't want any blood, anybody's blood on my hand. So there has to be the sleep seed planted. Um, God is going to, um, someone else might Get, water it and then God exactly. will increase but don't let it be said that someone that's that's been in your atmosphere they never even got a seed from you right and never exactly. got a seed that that would that would hurt me if yeah I know that, that person never ever got a, even a seed I might not have been the one to water it but whatever stage that I play or harvest it or harvest but I want to I want to know that I actually actually had a part to play in that in that salvation of that person because I know exactly. God is gonna do what God is gonna do. Um and people people are free to make their own choices. But um but I I know what my responsibility should be as a believer in this world. Exactly. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm like Jesus now. I'm just dropping some parables. I'm going to give you a parable. Uh, I remember years ago when I uh, was on the uh, outreach team and we went into this um, neighborhood to witness. And I walked up to this person. The, I'm going to tell you, the only thing I see was would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? And they were like, "Yeah!" And oh. I, you know, it shocked. You know, this was God. You know, showing me that He's the one. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws. Because that's all I say. I didn't go through no script. I didn't. I didn't whip out the Bible. I didn't know uh, go through no scriptures. I just asked them the question and they were like, yeah. So I led them to the Lord or whatever. And it's very, while we're on this topic, it's very simple to receive. Why I'm not going to do all this topic without giving you the opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and personal savior. Just say, Lord, dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose in three days. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. That's it. That's it. 
And thank you for my name being written in the Lamb Book of Life. Now go out and tell somebody. So the angel, the angels, if you repeated that after me, the angels are rejoicing. Mm -hmm. So the angels are rejoicing. So um, I didn't want to get past that. And I told a young person today, um, I asked the young person a question. I said, so why do you think you always um, are, are trying to sneak and do wrong things? And they and they shrugged their shoulders like, and I said, well, this is the prime example why you need a savior because you can't stop doing things on your own. You can't, you don't have the power to make yourself good or make yourself do right. And None of us something do. as simple as that, talking to a young person um, is the way that we have to have the wisdom and, you know, to be able to minister to anyone, no matter yeah. what age they are, because that I dropped the seed. I'm like, you know. That's why you need God. That's why you need to be saved because you can't stop on your own. No, you and can't. So, um, that has to be the narrative. Um, and it, and I mean, to be honest, and, and I'm sure other believers would say the same, that's always our agenda. Yes. That's always our agenda. When I um, come into relationships with people that are not in my circle and that I encounter on a daily basis or a regular basis, my heart is always like, Lord, you know, give me an inroad or give me an opportunity to drop seed. Exactly. And so, you know, we pray that someone received you, uh, Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. If you did, let us know. Um, that's why we ask people to like, share, uh, and subscribe to the channel. Share the video because we um, definitely uh, allow people to um contact us and let us know that you've received uh Jesus and if you don't we we'll find out in glory exactly we'll find out in glory we definitely will we will find out in glory so anyway we're going to get back on topic um but i i just you know the lord will have his way and so we thank god that he had his way and so now um the third thing but back to the temples and everything we you know i think we covered that we're just sort of touching on these things and then we you know dab deeper deeper but the third thing which is um you know hope prayerfully some people would not think that we're trying to condemn them but we have to bring this out the third thing on the list is murder and shedding of innocent blood as intercessors, we must recognize the culture of death, zombie death culture, abortion, assisted suicide, euthanasia that surrounds us and pray against it with our weapons of spiritual warfare. Right. Right. This is big. Um, this is really big, AZ, this part, because... Well, I'm familiar with a, 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 the hip hop and rap culture. Um, I have a lot of young people around me. Um, I don't know everything because I didn't know who Travis Scott was until this happened. We really, as parents and aunts and uncles, godparents, whatever, church leaders, we need to be paying attention to what these children are letting come into their ear gates and their eye gates because it is affecting a whole generation and a culture right now. I did not know, like this really substantiates that one part. I did not even know that there was a zombie death culture. Okay. I did not know, AZ, there is even a genre of rap music that is geared towards depression and suicide. It's a, it's yeah. A, I, yeah, it's, and I didn't know that. Like um, some of these young rappers that have died. And um, some of them have like overdosed on pills or whatever. Their their rap music kind of uh, pr prophesies their death um, to the point where some of some of the lyrics are like verbatim as to how they even died. So, and these young people are pumping this music, pumping this music until they take on this whole persona of depression and. Um, almost to glorify death as if it's some like badge, like you have gotten a badge or something. 
like you're a martyr or something. Like, really? So it is so common, more common than some people understand or know. This this death culture, people are not praying about that, but it's it's in it's here. And um I've I've heard my, my son explain it. He had to explain it to me. I said that makes no sense. But like you said, A Z from the beginning, you said the devil is not hiding what hiding what he is doing. He is not he is not um he's he's not taking um he just he doesn't care who he take. He he'll take anybody at this point. Whether you're young or old, it matters not to him. He wants he wants your soul. God wants your soul. So um we really need to understand that this is not just a matter of seeing a young person dressing in goth. Like back in the day when we were growing up, yeah, we had a few goth people in our midst at school, maybe that wore all black or whatever, and they were like in a goth. They they labeled that crowd goth. But this thing has like taken the young, like the younger, younger um crowd by storm. And they actually a lot of them have subscribed to it. And they have opened their spirits up to it. And so therefore they can they can definitely be affected by it. As she's researching. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm pulling up something. Huh? I know I know what you're doing. I know you're listening. Yes, yeah, I'm but, definitely listening. Yeah, so it's just interesting that these subcultures have come because like you like we said before everybody's looking for an identity but your identity can be found in god if you so choose the void that we feel the void that we feel like um in our souls or in our spirits where hey i wish i really knew who i was or i wish i know why i do that or i wish why i i, I did this that is a thing that that God and Holy Spirit can help you walk through, help you through life to understand who you are, not just as how you were born, but who you are in God. And so people are looking for uh, a way to relate to this, this world as it stands. And that's very hard. So that's why these subcultures keep popping up, trying to gain momentum but in a bad way in a negative way we're trying to bring people to a place of life and the scripture says more abundant life <clears throat> these, these subcultures are trying to bring people to death exactly now as we I, I found what i was looking for as we were looking talking about the shedding of innocent blood we're not you know we're going to go to other parts but I'm, I'm going to say this astro world began the 600 Six hundred and sixty-six months and six days from the creation of the Church of Satan. I'm going to put this in the chat. And we did not bring that out last week. I don't think God allowed us to bring it out. But um, so there was, as far as the shedding of innocent blood, there was. This, when we say that this was a um, sacrifice, there is. If, if you look at it spiritually, the 666, as we know, is the mark of the beast. And um, let me see, Revelations, I should have pulled it up. Um, it is the mark of the beast. And so Satan wanted his sacrifice um during this time and it was the anniversary of the of the church of satan mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna go to revelations 13 18 i am um using this Bible here, this smaller Bible, because um, it's easier for me to use 13, 
18. I'm going to put this here in the chat. And I'm going to put this up here so um, you all can. So if you have your Bible, I want you all to turn there. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and the number is six hundred three score and six. And as we know, uh, a score is two hundred years. So it is. Um, woo! Mm, the enemy just tried to attack me, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Mm. Jesus, the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Jesus, be applied. Thank you, Father. Yes. Mm. I just drank some apple juice and now, oh God, this is an attack for real. My father. Woo. So anyway, I'm gonna let me um mm. thank you, God. Wow. You all in the chat, pray for me. Woo. Father, we thank you, Lord. She shall be restored, Father. The enemy shall not come near her dwelling, Father. That mm. we have kept her set, Father, on tonight, Father, from any demonic attack, Father. We thank you now that you will close up any open doors or open portals, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We come against any bitch or warlock, Father, that is speaking word curses against this broadcast. Now, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you shut their lying tongues up now, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you now mm. that no weapon formed against her, God, shall prosper, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Father, that you will dissolve any inflammation, Father. Anything, Father. We thank you, God, that this weapon, that the weapons of our warfare, uh, oh, they're mighty through you, God, and you're pulling out every stronghold, God, every uh, demonic force in high places, Father, that is being territorial right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, God, that you have everything that we have put our foot on, God, that we shall possess it on tonight, God. Amen. We thank you, Father, for recovery. Yes, Lord. Now, God. Please the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. That's why people need to know that demonic uh, warfare is real, Father. Spiritual warfare is real. It is real. Yes, it is real. Mm, 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 mm. Go on, uh, Apostle. Um, what are we still praying or what? What are we doing? You can pray, you can pray, you can oh, yeah. We're gonna go on praying, Father. We thank you now, God, that you are using this broadcast, Father, to bring people to your kingdom. And we thank you, Father, right now that we declare, we declare, Father, that your will be done on earth, even as it is heaven, oh God. And we thank you now, Father, that you have called us for this appointed time, Father, to show forth your glory in the earth, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us uh, the ability to sound the alarm and the trumpet, oh God, in this world, Father. And we thank you right now that we shall not fear that we shall not um, be alarmed about Satan's devices, Father. We thank you, God, even for your wisdom, God, and your knowledge and your understanding, Father, or even the, the realms, Father, that we will be able to navigate through warfare, God, through spiritual warfare, Father. We thank you, God, um, even for wisdom, Father, even to how to combat this spiritual warfare that has come. Yes, on, God. Father, we thank you, Father, that we shall not be ignorant, oh God, and you will continually teach us and train us, oh God, and mold us and shape us, Father. We thank you for this on tonight. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it, it is just Woo! so amazing because God is God is who he is, and and we, we will worship him forever. And and people must realize um, one thing that I have been hearing um, 
in the in the spirit <sighs> is that change is coming. And yes. Change, it's going to be warfare. Yes. Whenever God begins to open the mouths of the prophets, it's not going to be um, met, not met with resistance. So it's yes. because of the change that is coming. And a lot of people don't understand this. They say, well, why do we talk about change? Because God does clearly say that he doesn't change. He says, I'm the Lord, thy God. I change not. However, we must change. We must yes. really be yes. changing into the the image that he created. We are continually changing into that. We did not just automatically pop into it, but we have been progressing and evolving um, over the years during our journey so we can be able to speak. And then exactly. we say, oh, so God opened my mouth to speak. And now just so I can be attacked? No. We, we were prepared. Yes. We were prepared to be attacked. Yes, um, yes, yes. The, when you're in the military, they we I never fought a war, but they always trained us for war. Exactly. Um, I never fought in a war, but I can fight, you know. And so the same as for us, we may not have to fight in a war every day, but when the war comes, we need to know how to fight. Exactly. And one thing about it as this attack came on me is that you know we have to realize that god is supreme and as soon notice what happened right before this attack i mean i felt like i was going to faint i'm sweating i'm like hot and um the first thing i put in the chat that astro world began 666 months six days and the creation of the satanic church was on the day that the deaths and the astral world, and we talked about um, the, the uh, right the the shedding of blood of innocent blood. Then I put up Revelations tw thirteen. Well, it's thirteen. I'm sorry. Yeah, Revelations thirteen and eighteen. I put it wrong in the chat. I'm glad that the Lord had me. Um, that the Lord had me put it up on the screen so people could see it. Um, so we know that the spiritual warfare is real. Mm -hmm. And that's why we prayed at the beginning of this broadcast, because if you, if you, if, if we were not bringing exposure to the enemy's camp, he would not have attacked me. I've been fine, you know, just whatever. But I'm telling you, you can see if Can you see the sweat? I'm still sweating on my face. Left. Your color's back because your color had left. Yeah. That's how I knew you was about to pass out. and But now your color has came back. Yeah. And your I had color. to turn the lights out because yeah. the lights were just, you know, it was just too much. Right. And um, one thing, and see, the Lord also had me bring this um, book that I have. If anybody, this is not a sponsored video, just have to let you know this is not sponsored. But John Eckhart, um, mm -hmm. If nobody knows Apostle John Eckhart, you should know him. Should if know you him. are prophetic or if you even if you're not prophetic, you should know who he is. This is a book that says prayers that root out demons. Get mm -hmm. this book. Get Period. this book. Like I said, this is not sponsored. Um, um, John Eckhart and his crew did not um, pay me to uh, put this book up here. But mm -hmm. if you um need right. to have this book in your collection absolutely yeah so but like we said the shedding of innocent blood thank you also for praying for me and praying me through and thank you um people in the chat and replay crew that were praying for me continue to pray for yes. savings we pray for you all uh because we know that um it is it spiritual warfare is real it is it is it is it's definitely real. It's definitely real. And I'm going to tell you, it took a minute for me to get over that. But it's we know that good. the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, huh? It's good to have for people to even see that. Because a lot yeah. of people are oblivious to it. Um, because they don't, because they do not um, work in this arena, you know, and they just get to go to church and do their five hallelujahs or whatever. 
But people that's out here in these streets, oh yeah, this right here is real. This right, is this is common. real. This is more common than um, some regular church folk would be would care to even believe or think about. So um, there, there are people out here going through these types of things in in the realm. So yeah, yeah, um, it, it 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 is very real. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna put the name of the book. Um, if if and that's why I tell people, um, spiritual warfare is real. Dealing dealing with the prophetic is real. Dealing with this is very real and being um naive the enemy will kill you because i'm sorry the way i felt i knew that if i had not been prayed up if you were not praying for me if i did not know what it was if we did not know what it was mm -hmm. um he would have said he could have taken me out or or severely incapacitated me and it really at one point i was like lord am i gonna have to i'm not gonna stop this live you know right, right. i'm not going to stop this live i will not let the enemy win if i have to sit here for an hour which i don't know thank you god i didn't but um we have to really be cognizant of the tricks of the enemy some of the things uh -huh. that you all have some some things that you all as far as physically go through um in your life the situations in your life and you say well this is the attack of the enemy but you don't address it you see mm -hmm. you notice that apostle immediately addressed what was the first thing i said i am being attacked <laughs> pray for me you know Period. immediately address it don't just say walk around well the devil is busy on my tail uh you know you're prophesying this stuff over your life identify it and deal with it immediately do yeah. not repeat do not let the enemy get any ground with you because if he get an inch he'll take it out and so when we were talking about the the um and we we bind you satan and the lord rebukes you satan period uh -huh. the period. lord rebukes you satan period in the name of jesus the yes, lord, lord rebukes you and we ain't got to speak in tongues for that, babe. You got you yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. We ain't got. But the enemy knows. Words. Yes, exactly. But like I stated, the enemy knows that his time is drawing short, and he does not want in any type of capacity any exposure from though. Even though he's doing what he's doing in plain sight, he doesn't want any exposure from the children of God, from the saints of God to pull back the, that curtain so people can see and recognize these little devices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely true. Yes. And um, so like we were saying before, um, the third thing was, you know, the, the shedding, the murder and shedding of innocent blood. And that's what happened. And we also talked about the um, the rooting out of, of, of demons and, and Revelations 13, um, 13, 18. And that's where God gives the number. And you know, I mean, time I read that scripture. As soon as you read it. It was like, boom, yeah. <laughs> soon as you read it soon as i read it so we know that the word is power it's powerful and he knows that he has to bow to who jesus, jesus. yeah exactly. and the thing about it the word itself that's why um you know the scripture says that the the weapons of um we don't have to fight with flesh and blood the word itself is a sword um uh, yeah so there is not like we yeah we have we have to learn how to engage our spiritual weapons however once we learn how to uh to to yield them and yield them to the lord god can teach us how to war so so the word itself that's how you got attacked the word itself is powerful. right the word More itself powerful. is it's warfare and if you don't know like i said the word the word is the weapon 
And if you don't know how to pray, you know, we we have these books and stuff like that that we, you know, um, if you don't know how to pray, you know, or if you don't know how to um, attack the enemy in his camp, mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. might need some assistance. This right. this is a good assistance. A great but if you know how to war, if you know how to war, you don't need, you know, you might not need this. I don't, you know, but you say the apostle didn't need it. She immediately began to war. <laughs> yes, Lord. That's, that's what we're here to do. We've been trying to do it. And when, when the opportunity presents, we have to be ready. Yes, be because the enemy doesn't, you know, he's, he's mad. He doesn't want this broadcast to go about because first of all, you know, we're talking about the exposure, exposing him. Then we, we uh, talk about salvation and bringing people into the kingdom of God and do a set prayer of salvation. Then we expose him, his, um, his number, the anniversary of the church of Satan. And this was when it happened on this day. Then we come, then we, 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 we finish this sandwich off with a scripture, Revelation 13, 18, uh, completely exposing him. So, well, uh, what else he, you know, he, he, you know, what else he tried to do? You know, still kill and destroy. That's all he can kill, still do. kill and destroy. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. So we just thank God. We thank God. Um, there's five more, um, and, you know, we try to keep it at uh, a certain amount of time in which we have already gone over that because the enemy had, you know, attacked. <laughs> I had to be prayed through. I had to be prayed through. And I thank you all. I thank uh, Apostle. And I thank everyone in the chat or who was watching that was praying for me um, that know God. Okay. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> that no God, but um, there was a message uh, over here on, and I'm wondering what this person meant. Um, and this was about 30 minutes ago. So there might've been somebody in here praying a, another prayer. Um, that. the That's what I heard when I started praying. That's why I prayed against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it came up, I, that's why I never put it on screen. Okay. I it. always put people, I put people comments and stuff on screen, but I never put, put that on screen. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is the article right here that if you want to go uh, search it out for yourself, um, the Charisma Magazine, the other, the other um, five is... Um, Witchcraft and Substance Abuse, The Removal of Christianity from Educational Institutions, Adultery, Sodomy, Perversions, and Other Sexual Sins, Fighting, Anger, Hatred, and Unforgiveness, and number eight is Rebellion Against Those in Authority. Uh -huh. So um, those are the, the eight was, I know we're not going to be able to get through all of those tonight. I, we, look, we might have to come back and finish Wednesday. those up. Next Wednesday. Yes, yes. Does anybody, if anybody in the chat have, have, or watching have any questions, you can drop your uh, questions in the um, chat. Or if you want to come up and have a, a um, if you want to come up, I have to see your face in the back screen, but you can come on stage without uh, showing your face. I will drop the link um, if someone wants to chime in. Uh, at the end, or any questions. I'm going to drop the link here. So we're going to give you a few minutes if somebody wants to come up and um, share what the Lord, the revelation that they received through this broadcast today. We'll give you a few minutes if you want to. Um, Make sure you tell them their face don't have to be shown because some people are camera shy. No, their, their face don't have to be shown, but when they log in, I have to see that they're a real person in the background. And then before I put them on stage, they don't they don't have to show their face. So if somebody wants to, um, we'll give you a few minutes if, if that's what you so desire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank you, God. But this has been really good. We're definitely going to need to come back on this apostle. Yeah, um, I'm down. 
because we know we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. See what the enemy did. <laughs> See, even left us alone, we might have got through and you know, man, I mean, come back next week, you know. But now he done messed with us. Now we're gonna have to finish it up. Exactly. We're gonna, exactly. We're gonna have to finish exposing him and um bringing him to to the light. Period. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, we you know, um, do you have any closing words or anything? While we wait, if somebody, we're only going to wait a couple of more minutes. We're not going to wait much longer. Yeah, the one thing that um, I was thinking about today is about salvation and how we do minister to people. And when we invite them to God, we need to invite them to encounter God. Because I realize, and I'm realizing the older I get, is that it was the, the beginning encounter with God that has solidified my relationship with God. And um, those encounters, although they are more spontaneous than not, I, I pray that people have an encounter with God. A, a, a unadulterated, authentic encounter with the Lord. That way, as they journey into their, their walk, walk with the Lord, the enemy is going to come. The enemy is going to attack. But your foundation, the encounter, the foundational encounter, I always can go back to that and say, I remember God when you touched me this way. I remember God when I when I was on the floor and I had this experience with you. I remember those times when you manifested this way in my life. Those encounters actually are 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 the things that I can go back and look and think about because they were so um, powerful in my life. So if I were to give an invitation. And my prayer um, to people who don't know God is I invite you to encounter God. I invite you to encounter the Lord. It will be something that you will never forget. You will never be the same. That is why people, well, that is why I, I can't speak for people, but for me, a lot of things do not, I, I don't entertain a lot because a lot does not excite me. What, just like a high, once you've been high on a real high, it's hard to match that high. It is I don't find a lot of a pleasure in a whole lot of things because now I still like Dunkin' Donuts or not Dunkin' but Krispy Kreme. But I'm saying that uh that initial encounter, those encounters that I had early on, they really sustain me because I have felt God, I have sensed God, I have been delivered by God. I mean, it's so many encounters. So now I'm like, look, I just want people to understand that they can come into an encounter with God and they can be made whole. Yes. Yes. And I think um, we need to do another prayer of salvation um, because we, you know, in case someone missed it in the front, front part. So I'll let you do this one, Apostle. Okay, man. Father God, we thank you. Father, for being um, with us on this broadcast tonight, Father. Father, we just can't even thank you enough, Father, for just being faithful to your creation, being faithful to your people. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, you know, we don't have to come with um, excellent words when we talk to you, but we desire salvation um, for your creation, Father. People that don't know you, people that are hurting, people who are in lack, um, those that are you know, in chains or in bondage, Father. We know that you came, God, to heal and save the lost, Father. And we thank you now, God, even that the times where we were lost, Father, that you 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 saved us, you found us, Father, and you met us, God, right where we were. Father, even in our times where we're down, Father, you always meet us right where we are. And so we know that this is the, the heritage and the legacy that you have left for your creation, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that, that people will come and they will ask, God, they will come on Save News and they will ask, Lord, ask, ask the people, what, can, what must I do to be saved? If you're saying that I can be made whole, if I can experience heal, healing, if I can be set free and delivered, where, where is this place? where I can be made whole. And simply, it's the place where you are right now. It's right where you are right now. You can say, 
you know, I believe, I, I trust you, Lord. I want you as my savior. Um, you can ask right now and it will be yours. And then, and then you can reach out to one of us or any person that you know is a believer or any church that you know is a Bible believing church and just let someone know so they can uh, walk you through uh, discipleship. But it is so important, um, you know, to the father that souls be uh, one unto the kingdom. And so that is our prayer and we believe it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And again, only thing you have to do is at, tell him that you're a sinner. Come ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and personal savior. And it's just that simple to um, come into the kingdom of God. We just want to thank you, everybody. Make sure you watch us if you have Roku or Amazon Fire TV. There's more programs on that also than on these social media platforms. Just type in Save News TV and um, you will be able to watch the other programs. We really, really, really appreciate you for inviting us into your homes. Uh, tomorrow morning at 9, uh, we're con uh, what's going on in Israel, we're con continuing the uh, series of Enemies of God. And uh, so that's 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, um, a.m. So please tune into that and just continue to um watch save news like follow us on all our social media platforms and um if you need oh wow i think i i um what is your contact email again apostle it is D dominion center ke at gmail.com And if um, anyone needs to contact um, Apostle Carmina, then this is how you uh, can contact her. And that's Dominion Center KE at gmail.com. Reach out to her and please, uh, she will try to get back with you as soon as possible and so again we thank you so much for inviting us into your homes we're going to show our little whoop, whoop, tv thing so for roku and um it's now amazon tv um we're on all pod the podcasts are on all major platforms spotify itunes we got a shout out to itunes man itunes is killing it on i mean downloading Yay. a lot of it and uh, we appreciate that um I Heart Radio, all the major platforms. We have on over eight podcasts, so you can uh, you download this episode and listen to it. Um, we appreciate you. Go to our websites and everything. All righty, then, everybody. I'm I'm done through talking. God Getting bless all of you. Love you. Want to enjoy some relaxing music? Do you need to get updated with all the latest news, but don't have enough time to watch TV for hours? Or do you need to get your praise and worship on? We have your solution to your problem. SaveNewsRadio.com got everything you need. Listen to SaveNewsRadio.com filled with praise and worship 24-7 everywhere. In your home, laptop, or tablet, on your phone, in your car, and on Alexa. Install the Save News Radio skill on Alexa and then just say, Alexa, launch Save News Radio. The beautiful, uplifting sounds of praise and worship music, ministries, news, and more. SaveNewsRadio.com, created to glorify God and edify the body of Christ. Tune in to Save News TV on Roku to watch these editions and more. Apostle Sevilla Purcell. Well, hello, welcome. I'm Dr. Sevilla Purcell, and I am so excited to be here with you today with a new you. Yes, 
in the midst of COVID, in the midst of pain, in the midst of situations that seem so hard that there seems that there is no solution. But in the midst of everything that you have, I came to bring you a message. There's a new you. There's a new you coming. Amen. Evangelist No Man Jenny. Matt Taylor. And when he went there, he looked at her and he did something outlandish. He said, he spoke to her first of all. Yeah. <gasps> she, if he knew who he was talking to, sir, he would be talking to me asking me for that water. And he said, if you knew who you were talking to, <laughs> if you knew who you were talking to, you would understand that I have living water. Amen. 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 Walk. Water gives life, but the living water, come on somebody, the living water gives you eternal life. Water that you will never thirst for again. Hallelujah, because it's, it's in the supply. And Apostle Carmina Cox. That your dreams are not tied up in your boo. Your boo thing, your bae, your spouse, your bae, your, your, uh, wifey whatever you want to call it yeah i'm good tiff um i am i'm real good um but we need to um herald this message make sure you like and share um because we need to tell everybody in the spirit of transparency that our dreams and our visions our goals our ambitions are not tied up in our relationships with another person these and much more on Save News TV on Roku.